see a kaleidoscope of color in my sleep. Is that all right? But you kick the music out of me. I got so many ideas and so many ideals and so much to give you that you don't say. I get stuck on you. I woke up one morning and uh, a lot of things had been changing in my life and I'd, and I'd always really liked um, music and I'd really enjoyed it but I never thought that I would be able to follow it as, as a full-time thing. And I read this, this piece of writing saying, find what it is that makes you wake up and makes you stay alive, essentially. And then once you know what that thing is, you build your entire life around that. I realised that if I can't write, then I don't see the point. So no matter how good or how bad I was, I realised then that I had to do it. My song on radio, I call you and tell you to play it loud. So your ears will bleed when you heard what it's about. I like to shake that salt on the wounded remains of my desecrated heart. Oh, I do, I. Oh, I do, I. Hello, come in. I'm just making breakfast. Obviously, it's a big day. Today is the long awaited EP launch into the woods with a cardboard box. Yay! And it's taken about five years <laughs> to release anything. It was only finished like a week ago. Uh, so yeah, I played it to a couple of people. Oh, I want to be taller. I'm really lucky that I've got people that have put it together. So it was really nice because I didn't have to ask for people's affirmation for this. I really trust my friends and I trust the people that have, have had a big part to play in this. And so yeah, I've only shown it to the people that that have asked to hear it rather than me kind of going, please listen to my music and tell me it's okay and tell me that I'm sane and normal. So, yeah. Let's play the game where we stay up all night. I'll wash my face. And you'll stay on the line You'll tell me stories I will listen closely You'll wrap me closely In your happy days and happy nights I don't know why I talk to myself Mum talks to herself, that's why I'm not blaming her 
Now I am actually just talking to myself. My mum's amazing. My mum is the most beautiful, beautiful woman in the world. I, I love my mum's food. When I started university in Australia, I moved seven doors down so that I didn't have to be too far away from my mum's food. My mum is one of those people that can do anything. She's a handyman. She writes really good children's stories, which she's not published yet. And she does folk art. She's really creative. She speaks four languages and, um, and made me very jealous. So my mum's a wonderful person. And when she laughs, I have to laugh. And when she cries, I bore my eyes out as well. And I don't know why and I can't control it. That's my mum. I think Raven's a lot like mum. Um, I think we're all a bit like mum. It's hard not to be. It's hard not to... to she's quite infectious, my mum. And she's, um, she's very admirable. So I think we're all a little bit like her. My dad used to say we're one third mum, one third him, and a third we were allowed to do with what we want. <laughs> so my extra third is, is a bit of music. Else to do if I weren't me and weren't with you, and I'd be fine, you'd be fine. That would make the less happy days and happy nights. up a lot and I don't know what I've been thinking but the sound of all these years is still my background noise the life I used to have the one that we used to live in it's a paperback of images and cross when I took up the guitar and started to write on my own I took it up at a time where I had a lot of very severe life changes not necessarily in a bad way in my mind at the time they were horrible and quite traumatic but they were certainly fuel for the first push of songs and I have to say, the running theme through all of my songs has been relationships, which, you know, to be honest, is, is a running theme through everybody's life. Everyone can relate to it. And for me, it was particularly harrowing, the time that I went through and, and how I came out of it. Sipping on the sounds of the afternoon When the wind blows out I'll breathe it in and out again And listen to the overture with you One last time I just really like anywhere that's got beef. I love the sea um, And I've always loved it We lived When I was younger we lived for a few years in New Zealand And the mission of every day in summer was to go down to the local supermarket, buy a watermelon, buy two plastic spoons and spend the day at the sea. And that was, that was what I did. I, I suppose it does kind of infiltrate into songs. And it's great imagery. You can always use, use nature for, for wonderful imagery and, and metaphors and lyrical things like that. And the chalk lines and the bass lines They drew straight lines onto the pavement And they curved up and they fell down And they rode up I can't come to my own. Being surrounded by water really calms me down And it allows me to, to get my life back in perspective and, and, and not be rushing around And I think in Hong Kong It's nice to find places like this That you can just come and hang out for a day Because you, you spend the rest of your time frantically running from place to place amongst everyone else, so, so that's why I like it. Our hearts will follow their where our new pressed bodies feel perfectly still inside. Now we're single. I would have been 12, 12 or 13. I remember being in the cupboard of my friend's mum's bedroom. We wrote poetry all over the walls and we just wrote things and I wrote something and I, and I kind of hummed a tune to it and it, it worked and then I realised that it was, a, it was another song altogether 
and I just added words to it. But that, that kind of got me started. I suppose ever since then, it's been like an extension of my inner monologue. And it's my interpretation of the world. And I think music's a wonderful vehicle for that. And I, and I just, I keep trying to do it. It's, it's like any other art where you express yourself and, and that's really what it is for me. The biggest problem for me was the fear and, and feeling really, really underconfident about my abilities, my abilities to make it into a career, uh, which haven't necessarily subsided now, but the change was that I got to the stage where I, where I said, well, I've now made the decision to make it into a career. I have to treat it like a business and not a fantasy. Because it has to be that serious. If you're going to make a choice about something that you're, you think that you're passionate about. And some people have the luxury of, of being naturally talented or being gifted in the sense that they know exactly what they want to do and there's no, uh, there's, there's nothing else for them. Uh, and I, I wasn't one of those people. I had a lot of things that I, I could have done. And, and it, it took a, a while to sift through the ones that didn't matter as much, the careers that didn't matter, the life or the lives that I didn't want. And, and, and this helped me realise that, yeah, if I couldn't write, I, I don't see what else there would be. It's called Letters to a Young Poet by Raina Maria Rilke. And this is part of letter one. You are looking outside, and that is what you should avoid most right now. No one can advise or help you. No one. There is only one thing you should do. Go into yourself. Find out the reason that commands you to write. See whether it has spread its roots into the very depths of your heart. Confess to yourself whether you would have to die if you were forbidden to write. This most of all. Ask yourself in the most silent hour of your night, must I write? Dig into yourself for a deep answer. And if this answer rings out in assent, if you meet this solemn question with a strong, simple, I must, then build your life in accordance with this necessity, your whole life, even into its humblest and most indifferent hour, must become a sign and witness to this impulse. And that's, that's the bit that I love. When we were children, we used to sit on the balcony and, and mum would fill up these buckets with these <laughs> big buckets. Normal size. They weren't big. <laughs> they I were mean, normal size bucket. But they were mini pails. They weren't. <laughs> I mean, they weren't <laughs> buckets like this. Those are buckets. Okay, so what's a bucket? Bucket is, is you like, know, yeah, that big. A bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we had these buckets that we just sit in. Mine was red. And mine was red too. <laughs> when when we haven't seen each other for a while, it's kind of like a You must listen to what I have to say about this and this and I've written this song and what do you think of this? And none of the sentences ever have starts or ends. And it's like jumping in over each other and 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 more me going, No, listen to me. And uh, and and then really Yeah, listen. it's definitely it's a flow. Like there's this flowing in and out. It's everything. That, yeah. It's everything, isn't it? We just yeah. have to just catch up. Just yeah. catch up. We just sort of have to do it. We do very definitely need to come back and recharge mm. um, from each other, and then we can go off and, and do our own things again, and we're okay. But without that recharge, we find that we sort of start to to lag a bit. And it's something really valuable that we've discovered in the past couple of years that's made well our, our choices. Our choices now. We've decided. So Chris is going away for a while and uh, and I have already booked flights to see her so that we can have that recharge so that we don't we don't ever feel in danger of drifting apart because we do realize how important it is for us to to be close to each other and we see our other younger sister as much as we can as well having heard her from when she started she wasn't that fantastic when she started she told me I shouldn't sing she told me I was rubbish I I I'd go and then I said, look, when you are good, I will tell you that you're good. And when she started to write her newer stuff, 
when she finally found her style, it sort of started to merge when she found her fashion, when she found her identity, um, personally and musically, it really aligned. There are so many things that I love about the Hong Kong scene and people that have made it the way that it is. People like Chris B, who is, has created and, and runs the underground, um, which is especially for indie, indie music. And people, people like Alive Not Dead, I've met people in Hong Kong that inspire me and I think that's what makes an industry work in a city, when there are people there that do it because they love it, not because they're part or want to be a part of a machine. They want to do it because they really believe in it. And Hong Kong is one of those places where I've been lucky enough. I mean, the people that are playing tonight are Hong Kong musicians and they're independent and they're doing it all the time. And they're so talented and they should be out playing more and they are. And more and more places like this are popping up. And I think as, as long as enough people believe that it's possible to do it, as cliched as that sounds, it will work and people need to stay positive about it because it will happen. I want to be on board. Tell you to play it loud. Thank you very much. I would love to say that I have an X factor. I think everyone would love to say that, but I think it's one of those things that it's totally intangible and it's all about a person's energy and how they take you in on stage. And and it's different for every person, which is why we've got such a wonderful variety of music um, and art. For me, I can tell when someone's got an X Factor when you watch them and you can't not look. What's the point in running when all we hear is machine gun fire? You're the only one who could have saved my life. Instead, you shot me down, and with my last breath, maybe I could just pretend that this machine gun fire didn't come from you. I'm going to the London School of Musical Theatre. Um, and I was over the moon and in total disbelief when I got accepted. 
it's going to be 9 till 5.30 every, or 9.30 till 5 every day, singing, dancing and acting and, uh, and learning to basically get a stage presence, be all that I can be in, in those three areas and, and that's going to really help me, not just in musical theatre but in performance in general and I, I think that's why it's so important for me to go there and do it. Oh, I'm leaving on Monday. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to leave my sister. My sister and my dad are here at the moment. And, um, and I'm not, my, I don't have any family in England. So that's going to be one of the most difficult things for me. But I'll never leave Hong Kong permanently. I was born here. I'm from here. I am going to speak Cantonese at some point in my life. It's bad now, so I'm not going to give you an example. But it's part of who I am, and, and I want to come back, and I want to be a part of what Hong Kong is, and I want to help to create what Hong Kong can and, and will be. And those are very, very big aspirations, but I think you've got to have them for as pretentious or as arrogant as they might sound. There needs to be people that, that want to come back and make a difference. That would make for less happy days and happy nights. Christina Lau, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye, Jack.